In this video, we will see how we can able to simulate an IED and discover an IED without connecting our PC to the network with IED's code. To start with, I will just um, show you how we can able to create a network uh, loopback adapter on your Windows PC, which is required when you are not connecting your um, PC um, to the network, because one of the um, Network adapter should be um, associated to the configuration window in the ID code um, so that I can able to understand. Let me open the ID code um, main screen. The configuration section required an adapter to be connected before we simulate. Basically, there should be a source. From our PC, and you wanted to simulate a 620 server or Goose services. So, this configuration section should be connected to one of the access points. When you wanted to practice uh, with ID code without connecting your PC to any network, it's important to have one of the loopback adapter without disturbing the other uh, active network adapters. So, you can able to sometimes it is really useful when some of them. A laptops or PC doesn't have the network adapter inbuilt on your PC because the latest laptops, model laptops, don't have the Ethernet access point, and you can able to create the loopback adapter easily on your PC. Just going to the, just pressing Windows E, there you can able to right click the disk PC and go to the Manage option. Basically, you go to the Device Manager. There you can able to connect to the device manager section you can able to just select the device manager there you can able to see the network adapters so you can able to select the network adapters section because we wanted to add one of the loopback adapters here so here I can able to select the add like a scene network adapter then you can able to just press next and we will go from the manual option and go next and we would like to go for the network adapters then you will see the listed um, or suggested option based on the windows so we would like to go for the microsoft and there should be an option for microsoft came test loopback adapter so you can able to press next and then next and there should be a new um, test loopback adapter will be created now in our PC. So the adapter has been created and we can able to just, just say finish here and this is a newly adapter that has been created now before I had one created and this is the one newly available here. I can able to just right click the open network settings on the right side down. <coughs> And there you can able to go to the network and sharing center to show you that I did not connect my laptop to the real network so that you understand what exactly happening after you create. So go to the details. So there you should see a new network adapter. This is the one which we created now. You can able to just see Microsoft came test loopback adapter 3 available on our PC now. So this is the one which we will be using for simulation. Um, another inbuilt network also I did not connect to my real um, setup. So it's like a standalone PC not connected to any other network. So this is an adapter that we will be using for simulation. So we go to the IDS code now. We'll close the rest of the tools here. Before you simulate an ID from ID code, you need an SCL file. The SCL file can be exported from the ID configuration tool or the system configuration tools. And some other example you can also see here, you can able to export the configured ID information from, from my com my release from the ID. Uh, IC 620 ID configurator tool. I can able to just export the configuration to SCL. 
and there you can able to pick the SEO schema based on the ID template that you imported and you can able to export the different SEL files which are configured from the different engineering tools. Once you export it, you can able to just say here it's a P643 the Discord test to make sure of the rename. So I will choose the SEL schema version 3.1 because it's addition to ID, and I will also show you why I'm choosing the SEL schema 3.1 because it's recommended from the ID template from the ID details that you can able to see. If you would like to um, know how to configure the 6MT engineering for I, my comic release, you can also reach the help section and able to learn how to design um, the different sections like ID details, the communication parameters, so the SNTP IP address, to synchronize the ID data set definitions, you can able to double click the ID details. There you can able to see the header information of the SEL details. The SEL version, also the original SEL version is 2007, which is addition to. Um, there you can able to basically see the, the schema version, which is the version 3.1 and addition to the addition model and the ICD template. Uh, versions. So these informations are important for you when you're working. Then similarly, you can able to export the SEL file from ABB Make Relays from the substation section and Dixie. You can able to just export the the SEL file from the IUC 620 system configurator. So once you export the different SEL files, you can able to just Open the ID code, then open the SEL file, or you can able to just directly go with the simulate ID option. So after you select, you get an option here. So I will just try to simulate another uh, ID which I exported. Maybe I will try to see from the Library is getting loaded for Dixie file. So this is just to show you why you can able, able to exactly export the SCL file from the different ID configuration tool as an example. But yeah, if we're using any other specific ID, make um, proprietary configuration tools. Um, you can able to export from the recommended way. For example, I will just open this own project. So this is a just test project. You can able to see only one ID, but if you are having real project, you may have more than one ID, and you can able to export the whole content by expanding the IE620 station and you can able to just double click there you can able to see the export details of, of your 640 station you can also right click from this level to export the details and there you can able to export the whole content of your data basically the SEL file Once you open the IC station, into the IC security system configurator, there you can able to just select the station. If you would like to export uh, the whole station, they can able to just select IC security station. There you can able to just say SAD file, or if you want to export a specific. Uh, system um, specification files you can able to just 
select from this level and you can rotate export and it's recommended to export the SED file if you want to use it for testing purpose. And you can able to even export the individual ID specific files by selecting the devices and specific ID. You can able to export and export the 61T device configuration. There you can able to flexibly choose the different ID specific files and you can able to export. And this is how you export it and you can also see the different SQL revisions and the 61T station. And you can just come back here and then try to from the SQL file. So in our case, we already exported one of the SCD files from the PCM 600 that I can able to see it's under station scout folder. I can able to go to the ID scout. So this uh, not required now. I can able to sorry, I just selected this current ID. You can able to go to the simulate ID. There you provide a path. And then you pick the, the SED file that you export. It's an example. You can able to import all IDs and you can able to choose one by one. You can able to simulate flexibly. And you can basically import more than one SCL file. It's not only uh, importing one time. You can able to import many SCL files. You can able to move once it's opened. Let's try to uh, simulate this particular ID and we can also see the information that many IDs are also getting imported. There are more than one ID available in the SCD file. About to close. They are not really required. The other tools which are <coughs> so can you able to go to the simulator section and now get able to see all the IDs has been imported. So pick the ID that you wanted to simulate. And there you can able to just enable the description. As we said always, when you're working with the ID code, it helps you a lot when you're working with any LN want to simulate specific data attribute and change the values to always go to enable the description to get the right value description when you're simulating it. So when you start the simulator section, it's important before you start simulate, pick the right adapter. So you can able to go to the start screen and select the configuration section. And we have added the new adapter, this whole purpose. So you can able to just see the, the adapter number three for the KM loop back test adapter with the net 14. You can also use the same adapter for sniffer in case you would like to use it for dummy testing purpose. I'm going back to the simulator. We just start the simulation. There you can able to use the local host IP address, which is 127.0.0.1. You can also provide this IP address by default, and you can able to um, enable the MMS server simulation and the specific port by default is 102 for 600 MMS protocol. And Goose Publishing also enable and by default, we also enable the simulation and test bit to make sure that um, you don't uh, simulate a goose message in the real environment. To be in safer side, we enable it, but it's a test environment. You can also uncheck so that the, there is no other subscriber in my case. If you are having a real goose subscribers, it's always important to enable this when you are testing it. Unless you don't, if you do not know why it is used. 
and we will also cover why exactly used with the real use case. And let's start. And expectation is we should get an error because we are um, using Dixie here on the same PC, and it says 102 port is occupied already by another service. So how do we know this? So you can able to say already I use code is suggesting another MMS port. In my case, okay, I don't want to use another MMS port. I want to use 102 port. It's also useful for real examples. So how do I know there is an 102 port X is occupied on my PC? You can just right click and go to the trust manager from the bottom of your PC trust bar and there you can able to go to the performance section then there you see uh, open resource monitor in the down and here you can able to see the network activity and when you come down a little bit there you see the listening port for example this uh, s7 help service which is occupying the 102 port this is the service you can able to just reach the service easily uh, you can able to just right click windows R and there you go to the services.msc then you can able to just select any one of the service and press yes there is the s7 device of service you can able to stop this service which is not really required at the moment when we are wanted to practice it then we stop the port and we can also see it's deactivated because MMS uses a TCP connection to simulate MMS server. So connection oriented protocol request response. Then we can come back here, start simulation. So you can able to just provide one zero to port now and there you can able to start simulating. And now we successfully simulated um, on our local PC um, with the local host IP address, the 102 port. And then you can able to just explore the different um, content that we have simulated here. So the Goose control block is simulated. And there you can able to see the, the simulation bit as well enabled when we simulated a Goose message. And you can also see the values as well in real and different type of report control blocks that are part of the SEL file and nobody occupied because no there is no active client and at the moment we have simulated an MMS server without connecting our PC to any other real network setup so by simply enabling the loopback adapter on our Windows PC and using an ID code and you can able to explore, as I said um, in another video, you can able to just select the overall LLM0 and these many report control blocks are available and nobody received it. And these are the examples you can able to understand before you're getting um, to the real network. And you can able to learn so many things in offline itself without you're connecting your PC to the network by simply simulating um, an MNS server and local host IP address. And then you can able to flexibly change the, the goose configuration control block and the values as well. And you can able to even see the setting group um, information. And these are the effective logical devices for the different protection functions like impedance, protection distance, protection ID. And you can also able to see the different um, functional constraint. Uh, very well and data set also provide you the clarity what are the different data set uh, and what are the values when you simulate simulate with the zero values so the data model which shows again the hierarchy and for example let me try to expand one of the protection uh, logical devices uh, or or current protection function so this is a our current um, protection with four stage and there you can able to see another four uh, logical nodes for each stage and there you can able to see it's represented as a, a dedicated um, logical node and the logical node has different data objects the data object again um, classified uh, as a 
common data classes it's enumerated uh, status uh, common data classes and it has a state value and the state value also have the the quality and this other information you can able to expand and you can able to change the value so very well by exploring simulating all the values in detail and the time tag information you can also even simulate this value as well this is how you simulate um, and you can also be able to go to the browser section and the simulated IED can be discovered as well so here we gonna use the simulated ID IP address, which is uh, 127.0.0.1, which is the localhost ID address. And the advanced parameter shows the default port and different parameters. You can able to just select discover, and it will discover the simulated ID. So this is how the real um, environment also looks like when you provide the IP address and discover an ID, and you can able to see whatever you simulated and your able to discover the ID and you can able to see the goose control block and you can also able to just select the goose control block and you can able to start subscribing to the goose control block and you can able to see here there is a known goose message here before it was in red color and you see goose messages started receiving by the ID score you can able to see the simulation flag is enabled and you can also just change such values you can also enable the sniffer to know what informations are simulated so the ghost control block information at least you can able to see here in the localhost pc so let me pick the right id you can also enable the filter for a specific id which is uh, d1q02 a1 this is an id and this is a goose control block which we are simulating it and these are the values that we can able to see and we can able to just also enable the retransmission so you can able to see the goose control block from the simulator section we can just go to the top there you can able to see the goose control block and select the configure goose option in the services section and then um, which is enable and you can able to flexibly configure the published goose control block from the simulator section and there you can able to select the configure goose option the section from the services and there you can able to stop the goose control block and you can able to uncheck then come back here start the goose control block you can able to even change the, the specific value for a single point you can even change the double point so from off to on different status and you can able to just say update and this value will be updated even in the sniffer side whatever the value that you change it and uh, the simulation flag has been set to false and the value has been changed as a next state and there is a double point status also the uh, the protection trip operator signal can be simulated simply from the goose configured goose control block option and you can also able to see the different icon from the simulated uh, goose messages and the normal goose messages that you can able to change the value and you can also able to apply the filter flexibly you can able to just come back here to the browser section and you can able to enable the reports so you can able to already see we have already selected a subscribe goose message and goose messages are subscribed automatically and the value also updated here that you can able to see the switch gear position and the circuit breaker also the logical mode trip indication so the values are automatically updated and coming back to the report section you can able to choose any one of the report for example let's choose one of the Report control block which have in the switching um, data objects back to the equipment. So we can able to just pick any one of the report control block which is not occupied. We can able to just enable the report control block here. We can able to flexibly choose the, the optional field to get more information, reason for inclusion, 
uh, so that trigger option comes by default that you apply in the ID configuration tools. And some of the information are default available in the ICD file for old relays, model relays, and the latest SEL model relays from addition to have the flexibility to, to, to define the trigger option from the different engineering tools. And basically the ID configuration tools. And you can able to choose um, the optional phase according to a requirement. You can able to just say enable here. And there is no report with you. You can able to just pick switch gear status and there you can able to click on the right side so let us change let us try to send the control command for this particular position so we're basically simulating we're simulating the id from the simulator section and we are we have connected already from the browser section we would like to send the control command from the client to the server so you can able to just select the data object which is a deep double point control in this case can able to see the tooltip and you can also just expand the, the data object there you can able to see the the control model so the control model for the data object is sp over tenon security there you can able to see in the top data and category by selecting the control data object there you can able to see the current status is of the position and there you can able to select the value from false to true and select selected and uh, successful for the position you can also see the report has been received uh, for the selected double point status uh, then there can able double point control and there you can able to see operate and the switch gear has been closed so this is how you can able to understand the, the functionality in, in offline itself by using the id code within the pc using the loopback uh, ip address and adapter can able to just say again from false to false and then select and operate and this is how you can able to try the control command for the double point status and you can also just go back here to the simulator section and then there you can able to see the logical um, note for the reports and there is one of the report has been enabled so in your in case, if you are connecting ID code in the real environment, you can also see how many report has been reserved by the existing client and which are which are the unoccupied report control block instance that you can able to occupy with ID code. And ID code can also work by just polling method without disturbing any active client by just drag, drag and drop the data attribute to the activity monitor. You can also enable the polling. You can also disable the polling here and if you wanted to use the report control block method and you can also set the polling method based on your requirement from the activity monitor so let's go to another option you can able to change even the setting groups you can able to just select the setting group and you can able to activate the setting group from one to two so this may be useful for protection engineers when you are testing with the um, different setting group um, when there's a requirement and you can also change the setting value if they already have the support for the analog setting um, value change mostly it's supported from addition to in some of the id specific models we can also enable change the setting value and this is how we can able to practice and you can also change the group back to one after you complete your testing And what are the other information you can able to ex expand all the data object and you can able to um, export you can able to export all the tested information which are available in the activity monitor as a CSV file and you can able to use it the signal information as a test report. Um, I can able to come back to the browser section. So let's go through the option here that are available as icon to simplify your testing activity so save a cl file which we have seen already open a cl file which is very simple you can able to basically import multiple scl files uh, on top of the imported scl file you can able to just say this is 443 cid file you can able to just import on top of the connected iet so parallel operation is supported in id code you can able to import multiple scl files 
and you can able to work with um, uh, simultaneously and you can able to connect more than one id when you are in a real line format and then there you go um, to discover id basically you provide an ip address and if you want to close uh, an id which is selected so this id is selected and you can also see the micro data model which is addition to a lot of logical devices and you can able to just say close id the selected id will be closed from the project and online offline just selecting this online and you can able to just go offline and connecting back you can able to see id code saves the setting that you set before when you are working with id code and you basically enable those information easily and the property when you go offline you can able to edit it and easily save it and then subscribe goes simplify when there is a ghost message issue in your real environment and this is how you can able to practice by selecting the subscribe ghost you ensure the configured uh, ghost control block in the real id um, is working properly or not if you are able to subscribe successfully to id code then there is no problem in the network or the publisher um, id then you can able to focus on the subscriber side what are the problems and issues mostly the vlan ids and the switches also the ghost control block parameter related to the needs commissioning bit and many other information you can able to easily um, change those information and practice it in simulate option you can able to duplicate this information to the simulator section and read all basically you can able to just select read all and it will read all the information and it clear all the indication you can able to read the whole data model and the information for the connected id and if you want to read specific value, you can able to choose the specific data point or state value. You can able to just say read and the specific data object can be read from the connected ID. And write value, so this is useful when you wanted to write a specific uh, value to the ID. For example, there are some data attributes that allow you to write the value and there you can able to write the value. From the ID code browser section and then control for the data object which is having the um, common data classes for the controllable data object for example we have seen already double point control let me try to show you some more information like the LLM0 and let's change the mode of the ID this is a different common data classes which is a direct control with normal security Let's change the ID from normal mode to test mode, then say operate and succeed it. And let's try to read all the data. And there you can able to see the icon has been changed because the ID um, mode has been changed from the normal to test mode. And you can also see ID code alert. Okay, there is a logical device, one, one or more has been set to the test mode so you can able to get uh, the different icons practice um, from offline itself by simulating an id and can able to just say clear indication and you can able to copy the data from here you can able to paste it into another information like uh, the test universe for example the boost control block it's also easy for you from here control block data also from sniffer also you can able to copy the data we can able to just select the specific goose control block, you can copy and use it for test universe. And then you come to the enable option to enable the reports and, and the goose control block. And from this level, you can also just select any port control block and use the GA. For example, let us enable this report control block and then you can able to once it enable you can able to just say who is the owner so that's id also you can able to see here the id have a support for that and then you can able to just say uh, GA general integration request and it will collect all the values from the simulator id and basically change the value from the simulator when you are simulating it for example the measurement values from the monitoring you can able to go to the same max view where you can able to expand the select the data object and select the set values there you see different options 
Okay, for the float value, like 100 ampere, there you can able to see it. Minimize the phase here, and then you go to the phase B, you can able to set 200, for example, and phase B, you can just set 300, for example, and set value. And come back here in the process section, and then you can able to see the real value because we already enabled the report. There is a data change happen, and you can able to simulate uh, the data object for the measurement of the stable point control, the state information protection signals. You can able to simulate the values that are belong to the report directly. It will automatically go to the specific data model. You can able to change the values when you are working with ID Scout. See so you can able to make ID Scout practice easier when you are working with the offline ID and you can able to even see the values with the quality in detail. There is see the quality data attribute. Also say it comes from the test source true and you can also see this is the reason we have put the ID into test mode and you can able to just disable the test mode from normal to from test to normal mode. So this is how you can able to practice. You can also say, sorry, the copy goes. You can able to select the copy goes for test viewers application. You can able to just say copy and then paste the test viewers goes control block to subscribe the goes message when you're using for protection testing or for a special application protection or control testing. You can able to just say now from the browser, read all, it should become gray now without the, the yellow color warning symbol. So you can also see the cipher to practice some values to make sure you also understand the different data object that you're simulating, changing the value appears correctly. You can able to export the details as a pickup file. You can able to share with another person using the ID code, can able to import and the SCL file from the browser section. Also import the import, export the pickup file. As a test report, you can able to visualize on the front end. You can also use dump and analyze. You can able to just directly open the specific message in the Wireshark. And, and these are the basic overview that we can able to get in the ID code. You can also add data set to get practice for the um, dynamic data set creation. And, but, but this particular ID doesn't support, but still you can able to practice it. In offline, you can able to a persistent data set or non persistent data set for a supported ID that you can able to see the pixel whether the ID has a support or not. You can able to create a data set and you can able to just drag and drop any data object. For example, so data set copy the data object that is really useful. And so you can able to create data set and it comes in the, the dynamic data set creation because it's defined as a dynamic data set when we define. So this is how you can able to get practice in offline without connecting your PC to the real network. In case if you have any more doubts related to simulation or testing, client server and goes application testing, feel free to contact Omicron technical support from the support line email and we'll be happy to support you with the right solution. Now you can able to see the different support line emails and you can able to contact us in case if you face any problems. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.